Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here and today we're going to be starting off our harbour area and what better way to do that than with one of my favourite sets the El Dorado Fortress set 6276 from 1989 So here we are with the El Dorado Fortress set 6276 it has 506 pieces originally and comes from 1989 it's hard to imagine this set being 30 years old and it still looks absolutely fantastic today although I have made quite a few changes. Now real life Nottingham is not near the sea at all in fact we're about as far from the sea as you can get but one of the rules I have for my city is to get as many different forms of transportation in as possible so it's really important to me that we have big ships and lots of boats as well as planes, helicopters, cars, vans, lorries and all the rest of it. So I'm adding a harbour area as if uh, Brick Nottingham were on the sea and as part of that I wanted this fantastic set that I always wanted as a child but never managed to get and the only way of really getting that into Brick Nottingham in a coherent way was by having it as a historical monument that has been turned into a tourist attraction. So with that in mind, I've made a lot of changes to make this appear more like a tourist attraction in the modern day, rather than some weird time warp where we've got uh, a medieval fort in a modern city. Now, first of all, what I love about this set is just the colors. They're just really fantastic. This yellow and white combination, though it shouldn't technically work, I don't think, but it really, really does. And it really pops. And the odd bit of red brick showing on the white and so on, and on the yellow, really, really adds to that contrast. I really like the raised base plate. There are not many raised base plates, most of them to do with castles or sometimes city sets like uh, there's a ranger hospital and a uh, police station one year, but most of those don't carry it off anywhere near as well as this set does. And for diversity and variety in my city, I want to have at least one thing with a raised base plate. So this is definitely the best way of achieving that. Another thing is there's a lot going on in this set. We've got everything from a pier at the front, a crane, a prison, a sort of fortified bit, big gatehouse, even an openable, uh, what is it, dungeon or trade storage area? Who knows? And it's really complex as well. There's lots of different nooks and crannies and battlements and all sorts going on. So it's a really, really interesting set. It's also got a fantastic flag with these crossed cannons on and this turret I've deliberately left empty because I think I'm going to use some 1x2x5 translucent bricks to support something flying above the fort. Just coincidentally, not necessarily interacting with it. Now I have amended this set quite a bit. Uh, one of the major things I've done is replace the large Fabuland style prison gate with a more modern 1x4x6 opening with a prison door on it. And in there I put a padlock on the lock and you can see that maybe in the darkness there, there's a couple of old style pirates locked up they'll be part of the actors that make this such an experience as a tourist attraction. I've also removed the second set of steps that did come from this part down onto the uh, onto the quayside piece. I never quite understood why there was a fortifications all the way around but then there was a sort of second way in right at the front. It didn't seem very secure to me. So what I decided to make this area here which never really had a very clear purpose, I decided to make it into a toilet. And you'll see that I've added a 2x4 grey Technic plate with holes in it to signify that. And the other side of that 
actually overhangs the side and overhangs this bit here. So it seems like a very good idea to have a medieval toilet there for the troops to use. I thought that was quite a good, good idea. I've also made sure there's lots of gun ports on all the sides by uh, clarifying that and also adding battlements around this bit which didn't have battlements. Also added a third cannon uh, and replaced a lot of this bit with reddish brown. Now reddish brown didn't exist in those days so all the wood pieces, much like this crane still is, were in black and although that's fine and authentic to the original I thought it'd be much better to do them in reddish brown. There was a colour which is now just called brown which is a, sort of a much more drab colour and you can see this boat is actually brown and you can see it's a lot duller sort of colour but you couldn't get plates and and so on in brown it was just for pieces like the boat and this treasure chest and so on that were done in that colour. So I think it looks a lot brighter and more realistic with this uh, reddish brown there as well. I've also added a lot more and better torches so you can see there's at least what six around seven up here there we are and they're actually being held up by modified one by one bricks that didn't exist back then. I've also added a parrot at the back just for effect and indeed some tourist boards since I'm using it as a tourist attraction I thought I'd put up put in some additional sort of information boards that would be showing visitors more information about the history of the site. And then onto the minifigures so I've added a few people with cameras who are clearly the tourists and there's uh, one of the guards, the captain of the fort and even a normal trooper who's having his picture taken with this guy using a selfie stick and there's even a kid with a pirate hat on and an ice cream enjoying the show and the show that is going on at that moment is the theft using the series 16 scallywag pirate of this treasure chest using the crane which is being stolen and lowered onto this little pirate rowboat with the uh, series 8 pirate captain the pirate queen from the chess set the pirate chess set that's set 40158 and just a, a normal pirate here doing the rowing so I thought it would be a good setup to have that treasure chest being loaded onto this rowboat. Now another thing I've added then is a wanted sign. I saw it when I was making a bricklink order and it's, uh, it's from set 6242 Soldiers Fort which is actually a set from 2009. It's pretty much the same idea as this set but 20 years later. And the pirate in this looks mysteriously like the pirate here. So I thought that would be a really good touch as a bit of added scenery for it to be a wanted board. Right, so that's the set 6276 El Dorado Fortress, one of my favourite sets of all time. And I'm going to put that in my Lego Harbour right at the back corner. So compared with the rest of the city, the harbour is located over here. And it's at a lower level, this table, to represent sea level. As I've said before, my city is going to be done on many different levels, so sea level is about six bricks lower than normal ground level. Now, although the El Dorado Fort is on its own at the moment, looking quite lonely in the harbour area. I will be adding to it very soon but even on its own it's really looking fantastic against the light coloured walls and 
the diorama going on at the front with the show with the pirates looks fantastic in my opinion and it gives a lot more diversity to the city in that we've got pirates in a modern day city uh, an old fort in a modern day city cannons and parrots and all the rest of it so I'm really happy with the inclusion of this set in a meaningful way in Brick Nottingham. <laughs> So as always, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. A next city update will be adding to this harbour area some more. But the next video is more likely to be a brick haul so we can get through that backlog of orders. We need bricks to build. So until next time, see you!